we're ignorant about how to use these things. Our society, I, I speak of a species with amnesia, we've forgotten the old techniques and the old ways of doing things. We've the, There's been a concerted effort in the, in the modern world to demonize these substances and to cut them out of our lives and to associate them with irrational behavior and craziness and so on and so forth. And and to move to move forward in this field, it I hate to use the word, but it needs to be made more respectable because it's the key to understanding so much about ourselves that has been obscure and mysterious until now. It's just for a person who's experienced it, it's so strange the contrast between the experience itself and the public's perception of it. Particularly the the average person who has not experienced psychedelics who looks at it like this frivolous ridiculous mm. thing like why would you engage in such a thing why would you i mean i remember I had a conversation with michio kaku about it once talking to him about uh psychedelic mushrooms and, and he was basically telling me like scientists want to strengthen their mind they don't want to ruin their mind in, in that sense like wow. you don't want to waste your mind on drugs and i was yeah. like oh but there's a guy who needs to do some drugs <laughs> yeah, exactly. People, Me and him people, both. Make these, people make these kind of statements as though they're facts. Yes. Uh, yet those people have had no experiences of the of of the substances concerned. But I actually think and for his own career, though, for his own career, you you almost have to say things like that, or at least then we're talking when when I had this conversation with him more than a decade ago, probably fifteen years ago. So when when you have these experiences. And you, you know, you, you run into the conventional perception of these. Uh, you understand that these people, almost like, like what happened with Ruck and what happened with many other scholars that took chances and discussed these things. You wound mm. up being this crazy person. You wound up being mm. this easily dismissed person. And it's very, uh, it's, it's, in in many ways, it's discouraged in a very powerful way. And and it because can be devastating. There has yeah. There has been a hugely well-organized and well-funded propaganda war uh, against these substances. Uh, our society prides itself on the alert problem-solving state of consciousness. And the alert problem-solving state of consciousness does have an important role to play. But part of the madness of our society, why it's become so suicidally dangerous, is because the alert problem-solving state of consciousness has been given a monopoly position. And what psychedelics do is they undermine the dominance of the alert problem-solving state of consciousness and they, they show us the much wider range of consciousness that is uh, that is available uh, and and therefore they are um, insidious to the powers that be those powers that run and control our world today don't want people thinking for themselves they don't want the propaganda to be unpicked by a mushroom uh, and and that's why we've we faced this propaganda war and what we're dealing with is the legacy of that propaganda war and and the majority the majority of people unfortunately don't realize that they've been subjected to 50 or 60 years of lying propaganda they think it's actually all facts yeah. and this is what needs to be unpicked and we're in the middle of uh, a crisis in this country in regards to police violence and police brutality. And uh, a big part of that is the war on drugs. It's a yes. giant part of it. It's responsible for the Breonna Taylor uh, murder, which is yeah. uh, being discussed right now and people are protesting. That was a war on drugs. Uh, Absolutely. No knock raid. I mean, that's, that's, that's what that's about. And th most of these... Yep war on drugs at all this is the this is the thing it's a completely maniacal I, I, idea because ultimately yes. it's not a war on drugs and i've used this phrase before it's a war on consciousness yes our society does not want certain kinds of consciousness to be experienced it wants to shut them down uh, and and it treats us like children if adults are not free to make sovereign decisions about their own health, their own consciousness, and their own bodies while doing no harm to others, then freedom is a meaningless word. Yes. Uh, and unfortunately, freedom is a meaningless word in the societies we live in today. We do live in a heavily mind-controlled society where facts are, where, where propaganda is disguised as fact. I, I agree with you, but I think this battleship is slowly turning. And I think it is. that these kind of conversations that we're having right now, it's in, it responsible in, in a big way 
for shifting the way people perceive these things. For the longest time, the only way we've been explained to, uh, the only way these subjects have been explained to us has been in, in demeaning terms and that, yeah. that these are bad experiences and you're going to wreck your life, you're going to ruin your life. And, and when we're here saying, well, maybe it'll make you a better person. Like that, these are revolutionary thoughts in the 21st century. Mm. That, yeah. And the fact that there's so many people that are echoing these statements and so many really intelligent, well-educated people who who don't, haven't ruined their lives, who have families and jobs, yeah. and, and they're saying, no, this this is actually good for you. Yeah, and, and you know, if it, it comes down, I think it needs to be recast in the issue of, of individual freedom and individual sovereignty. Of course, there must be limits on individual freedom. We must not do harm to others uh, in exercising our freedom. But really, Taking a psychedelic is the least harmful thing it's possible to do to anybody. It's an entirely inward experience. Yes. Uh, and, and it should not be controlled by the state and by government. What's happening here is that we're literally being treated like children as adults. And it's a most unfortunate aspect of our society. And the way I see government seeking to use the current crisis to add to its power, to dominate people's lives, to even enter into their homes, to encourage neighbors to snoop on one another, it's a very insidious trend that we're in and the war on drugs has been a big part of that trend for a long time. And but you're right, Joe, the battleship is turning around and it's turning around because people are waking up and they're saying, we're just not going to put up with this shit any longer. We're not going to be told what to do. We're not going to be treated as infants by our government. Here, here. And the thing about the psychedelic argument too, it, it, it falls apart, the, the idea of criminalizing it, because it lacks all of the rationalizations <laughs> that you can get with crystal meth and cocaine and all uh, death, overdose, all yeah. uh, ad addiction. Like m mushrooms are not addicting. Like these, these yeah. things are, they're, they're not addicting in term. Unless... And, even, and even so, we already have laws that deal with negative behavior towards others. So yes. if somebody is on a particular side, substance and they harm somebody else. We have a law yes. governing that harm that they've done to somebody else. We don't need to have a law that enters the sanctum of the individual's consciousness and tells that person what he or she may think and what he or she may experience. It's a really Huxley-esque or Orwell-esque world that we're, that we're messing with here.